Wait a second, guys. Am I seeing this right? Honestly, I think I am seeing this right. I think they just... The madmen. They... Look at this. Oh... Holy... They, they actually... They actually did it. They paint across UV tiles, as in UDIMS and Substance Painter. They, they actually did it. Honestly. The new workflow. I mean, obviously, it's not a new workflow, but... but but they did it! This just basically makes all my tutorials about this pointless. I mean, I used to try and show people how to uh, mimic painting across UDIMS, and now they actually did it. We can actually do it! Well, you know what, guys? I'm just gonna dive straight into this, and I'm gonna show you guys how to, uh, how to do it yourselves. I'm just gonna use my uh, old uh, worm uh, uh, model, and, and basically I'm just gonna start, um, you know, doing it basically. I'm going to paint some uh, textures across UDIMS and I'm going to show you how to stitch your UDIMS together because you may have models that are basically have uh, uh, you know uh, seams or UV islands that are basically not allowing you to have a seamless texture across so you're just going to import under substance painter and you're going to want to modify it so I'm going to show you in this tutorial how to basically clone the texture uh, from one UDIM tile to the other so it looks quite seamless so stay tuned because this tutorial is going to be a hot one okay so we're in uh, Substance Painter, uh, the new Substance Painter that is. Uh, we're just going to create a new file and we want to bring our model in. Now luckily I've just exported my model here ready for use. He's got uh, quite a few UDIM tiles to work with. We're going to keep the document resolution at 2K. No need to stress the system on 4K on this one unless we want to change it later on. Right, and then we're just going to use UV Tile Workflow, which is a new option in here to basically activate UDIMS. Uh, we're not going to use the legacy stuff, we're just going to use this preserve UV Tile layout per material and enable painting across tiles, which is basically what we want. Uh, we're just going to press OK, and now our, our mesh is imported, as you can see. This is it, the uh, hot uh, uh, steaming pile of, uh, well, whatever this is. Right, this worm, and on the right side here, you can see our UDIMS. Now, this is the, these are the jaws here that we can see, and for some reason, I've got some flip normals on these jaws. Don't worry about that. We're not really gonna be looking at that problem. We need the body. We need to work with the body in this situation. So, if we could keep the Control Alt and right click on the body, it will basically move to this texture set. Or you can go up here, click on the texture set list and you can select main body or whatever you want to see and these are the UDIMs for the body right and we've got 10 UDIMs in there now I have got textures already for this made so I'm just going to import those in here and I'm going to show you how to do it which is quite an important thing actually to do uh, if you want to see if the, the painting across UDIMs work I'm just going to take a uh, brush, uh, where are the brushes, right? I've got a brush here and you know we've got a basic color in there set up a white a whitish color I'm just going to change that to uh, red and as you can see as I drag across you can see that this brush is now applying across all the UDIM tiles that you can see on the right side which is great, right? I'm just going to I'm going to delete this uh, paint layer that we don't need it and let's start bringing our textures in this is very useful for when you've already made a mesh a long time ago and now you want to basically bring your model into, into Substance Painter with this new UDIM setup but you want to make your uh, tiles seamless. So, um, I'm now going to create a uh, fill layer, right? And because I've got the main body selected, this fill layer is then for the whole, uh, for all the 10 UDIM tiles basically in there which is fine. Right, now I have a folder in which all of my textures are stored, which is this folder, right? So I've got an ambient occlusion map, a base color, um, you know, emissive, height and so on, normal map and so on. So I want these textures to be brought into this, um, into this project. Uh, now what you'll see here, I don't have an uh, ambient occlusion, uh, for example, channel, so I need to add that. So I'm gonna go over here to the top, uh, to the texture set settings gonna press the plus button for channels, I'm gonna add the ambient occlusion, 
Gonna add a scattering one and an emissive one. Now I don't really have any emissive maps on this, but you know I, I've got, I, I do have the channel there, which is fine. So we're gonna use that. Um, hey, look at that damn camera started to work again. Right, so uh, we've got the, as I said, the maps in there, um, and we want to add. Uh, so we have the ambient occlusion scattering emissive. That's all we need for now. Uh, we can then close it, but we do need to activate it for our fill layer. So ambient occlusion scattering emission. Now you can see these map over here. So the new way the substance painter will read these um, textures that we've already got set up in here, as you can see, they're already all these textures are named. They have a, a certain naming convention. Now it's very important that this naming convention is made known to you it has to end the, the, the name of every every file has to end in point one zero 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 one whatever whatever number you have so for example in my case one zero zero one for ambient occlusion one zero zero one for base color and so on but it's very important that all your textures work this way otherwise substance painter will will not uh, import them properly and you will have to manually add them to your fill layer. So let's just open our project folder here and we have uh, we have the folder where the textures are. We'll select the first texture of every category so the ambient occlusion, base color, emissive, height, uh, normal map, metal smoothness, uh, roughness and then down here we've got substance scattering. You've seen that I've selected 101 every time, right? So that's the way to do it. And I've got eight maps selected since there's eight categories. And then I'm just going to drop these over in here. Then this import resource uh, pops up. Select the first one, hold shift and press on the last one. So we will select all of them and then change this to texture. Now, once that's done, uh, you'll see that they're, you know, thinking the, the, the computers, you know, uh, basically uh, processing all these images. Uh, we'll import our resource, well, however you want it to a shelf or whatever. I'm just going to do current session only and I'll press import. Now these textures are being imported into Substance Painter and you will see they'll have this number attached to them to basically tell you how many textures lies in every set. And in my case, it's going to be, I believe, 10. Uh, this will take a bit, so don't rush it because uh, depending on how big their textures are, my, mine, for example, are 4K. Um, so basically, I'm importing 4K textures into a 2K um, texture set, which I can then change to 4K if I want to. So you can see the numbers, right? And our model hasn't changed in any way because we haven't yet added the um, these texture sets in, in there. So I'm going to drag the uh, first one is the ambient occlusion. So I'm going to drag that into the ambient occlusion slot and then you'll see that the ambient occlusion has now been applied yeah nice and nice and easy nothing for me to do i'm going to drag the base color now and that also gets added properly as you can see like that uh, the next one i think it's a emissive one and because there's no information on it it's just the one texture um, and then i've got uh, i think the, i believe the next one is height yeah so let me just drag in height and then metallic normal you can speed this up basically by adding these in uh, the computer will just simply process them as it goes along and that's the last one is scattering isn't it yes and i've just added that in now we don't have scattering active in our project file so we will need to do that uh, the way to do it is you go up here to the display settings and make sure you've got activate subsurface scattering, which will then activate it. Now, depending on your preferences, you can increase the samples for to get better quality on it or not. Uh, so I've added it. Now we can go into the shader settings over here and we can have a look at the scale if you want to change it. Just so you can see the differences with scattered and without, I'm just going to disable it and that's it with without. And this is with uh, it on. Right, so our texture is now fully uh, textured the, the way it should be in terms of the actual body. The teeth are untextured as we haven't added anything. And I still got a problem with the flip normals. I would have to go in a software like Blender and actually fix the file to flip them, to flip the normals. Um, 
So yeah, we can now, if we added a paint layer on top, uh, let's just get another, another brush because that's a bit too, uh, well, too difficult to work with. Um, so you can see that I'm basically well, painting across you this like I used to do before and it's seamlessly transitioning between the head, um, you know, uh, first part of the body and so on. So it's quite easy to do these settings. And Substance Painter is a lot quicker now as well, so it, it's quite easy to paint them across. Now, one of the things that you'll see here is this, right? The problem, the problem that I've got here is when I used to, when I did my uh, model, uh, I had a seam right over here, and if I basically, um, you know, hide everything, which I don't think I can. Uh, Hide all, let's just bring the body, right. So over here, if I turn wireframe on, um, right about there, th there's a line, that's a, that's a UV tile, uh, sorry, a UV island, you can see it right over here. So I used to have, a, I have a tutorial on YouTube on how to basically try and blend these together. And it works fine when the uh, geometry changes, like here, for example, um, because these are, again, are, this is a UV tile and this is a, so this is a UV island and this is a UV island on its own. So in order to basically get them to blend with each other, you can see right there, you can see the seam. Uh, I had to use a bit of trickery, which I showed to you guys in my tutorial. Hopefully, I, I hope you guys watched it, because now we're actually going to use the knowledge from that tutorial to help us with fixing this texture. Uh, so what do I mean by that? Well, basically, I want these to blend seamlessly over here. And if we go to the, we use the clone tool for that. And if we try to clone, so press V on the keyboard to select a point, and then you try and paint, nothing really happens. And that's because if you watch my tutorial on how to do this, you will know how to properly set it up. So uh, what we'll do is we'll uh, go over here. We've got base color selected. We've got it as normal. So what we want to change this to is pass through. And then we select the metallic and same thing. We say pass through. We select the roughness and the same thing. We do uh, pass through, and I'm just gonna not gonna say that anymore because that's what I'm gonna do for all of them. So everything on this um, on this setup is going to be set up as pass through. God, I sound like a robot. So we're just gonna do scattering, and there's nothing to do. Well, I'm gonna do emissive as well in case we'll ever wanna add some emissive. And that's it. Basically, we've moved everything to pass through. So now if I a V and select something for the mesh that I want to clone and I start painting, you can see that it's now changing the mesh. Now this is quite interesting because now I can basically blend these almost perfectly with each other as you can see, right? No more seam. There is no more seam. Seam is unseen. The seam is unseen. Oh, that sounds good. And you can do this basically to hide away the entire seam. And obviously you're gonna to have to work a little bit on it to make sure you get your proper proper um, you know, setup that you want. There is still gonna be that geometry sticking out a little bit. So it's not gonna be perfectly seamless, but I would say, you know, the further away you go from the mesh, something like this, you'll not see it. It's gone, it's has disappeared. Uh, so that's how to fix this when you had your textures already made and you have all these UV islands and you just didn't want to, to, to basically fix that problem. Now, if you add another material on top, so let's say I'm just going to add this, this alien growth. Now this is going to basically go across your entire mesh now. It's, it's being applied as we speak. This is gonna take a bit of time because it has to compute every, every mesh in there. Um, and the way uh, these guys as substance have uh, you know sorted this one out for performance sake uh, you can basically mask all the other tiles that you've got in here so for example we click these buttons over here we can zoom out like so and basically will allow us to select parts of the mesh so if we select all of these or just click control drag we've basically masked this texture to only show up on uh, on the head so if we click on the paint uh, on the bucket again you can see that the mesh sorry the um, uh, texture is only masked to that one UDIM tile which is great now let's just uh, delete it and on the paint layer that we have we'll just um, so basically what I want to do on the paint layer let's just delete the paint layer as well uh, let's add a new paint layer um, and I want to use this oh, sorry I have to go up here 
Um, I want to basically add this material as you know the thing that I'm going to paint with. So in order to do that, you have to not have the clone tool for one. So you go into paint mode again, and then you've got in here the um, the material that you want to use. So I'm going to drag that in there on the base color, and now I can paint with this material. So as you can see, I can do this. Now, when we paint new texture on uh, with this new setup, well, basically, you know, it's going to be a lot easier because it's going to be seamless automatically. There's no more I have to use a clone tool or anything like that. So you can see how that's coming out quite nicely. Now, these brushes are already doing a lot of, you know, a good job at uh, what I'm trying to do. God, I think this is a huge brush, isn't it? Yeah, let's just make that a little smaller. This is smoke. Yeah, it's a smoke brush. God, I gotta like really fix these brushes. Okay, so as you can see, we can paint across like so. It actually works quite quite quickly. Now I'm not in 4K, but I can switch that to whatever I want. And I wouldn't really I wouldn't really advise you to use 4K unless you have a very beefy computer. So use 4K only on the final output. So when you want to see the texture, how it's gonna look like. But look at how nice that is. Now, obviously, it does depend how big the Udin tiles are, uh, as in the islands inside of them. So some parts of the texture is going to have more quality, some won't. Uh, so in order to sort of counteract this problem, if you paint over here at this resolution and you paint over here and you want a different resolution, then I would advise you to just go on the actual Udins themselves and create uh, texture uh, textures for them specifically. So you can do that by clicking over here, selecting one basically, uh, well, it's not about selecting them, you can have the body selected, but just make sure that you mask so it only applies to that one. So what I mean by this is if you, for example, add this over here and you mask it to only, sorry, to only apply there, uh, what we're gonna do is just gonna select everything else and make sure nothing else, right? So it only applies there, right? Uh, now, when you go back to the paint, uh, to the paint layer, uh, we've got um, oh, this should be a, a projection. Hmm. God, I'm not seeing it. Is it because I'm not using? Oh, sorry. I should have used a fill layer for this one. So basically, just delete that. Add a fill layer. And the fill layer, as I said, we want a mask, so it only applies to one area. So we'll just do that, and it's active only only there. So with this fill layer, we want to obviously add in, so we'll click the fill layer, we want to add the texture in there. So we're just going to bring the base color and that will basically texture that entire thing. Uh, obviously we can add a mask on top of it, a normal mask like we used to do. So that's not a problem. But what you can do with the fill layer, you can actually go and change the scale. So for example, you can do a one scale or you can do a uh, 10 scale so that's going to give you a different kind of scale for this particular uh, part of the mesh and one other thing to do here as well is you can select for example the height and select replace and then you can also select uh, normal and select replace so then this basically this um, fill layer on this uh, part of the UDIM tile is, is di di dictating the height and the normal, right? That's very important. And as I said, you can basically add a black mask, for example, on it, and then you can just paint it in if you want to, you know, just make some squiggly lines in there and so on. But that basically is how you paint across UDIMs and how you import your textures. Now, this is shown by Substance as well, but I do, I don't, I haven't seen them showing you how to fix your formal meshes, like, you know, fixing these particular parts over here. Uh, I think that's very important to do. You know, you can add, as I said, you can add the paint layer. You can paint on top of it, that's great. But how do you actually stick those together and to have the same texture? Well, I've shown you, now you know. So go and use that knowledge to uh, better, you know, make better models and make some in very interesting geometry. I know I've got a lot of work to do on this thing still. I mean, I might actually restart it because the geometry is just not up to standard, guys. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe to this channel if you did. I'm going to post some more videos. Stay tuned for my super anime effects that I'm still working on. It's, it's you know a couple of days away or weeks. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to make sure it's actually perfect. So I'll see you, I'll see you guys then. So uh, have a good one. Cheers.